another episode of Woodland Bushcraft UK. So, we've got a new axe, we've got a boy's axe, and it is fresh, freshly delivered. What do you want to do to get this to be able to perform well? In this next video, I'll be showing you a few little tips and tricks on how to get this into a working tool. First up, let's look at the axe and see what sort of specimen we have. So as you can see, the handle is very nice. The grain is almost perfect, running straight through with hardly any run out. Next, let's check the alignment. Now that is bang on. As council two tall axes go, this is a prime specimen. Okay, so we're gonna start on the edge and now the key for a good chopping ax is having a nice, keen, aggressive angle on the edge. We're gonna go for a flat grind on this and uh, it being council tool, it's gonna be very, very easy to file sharpen because the metal is so soft. What we're gonna need, let me show you the tools. So we're going to use two different files. We've got a bastard cut file and we've got a fine cut file. We're going to do most of the work with this big, big bad boy. And then we're going to finish up, get rid of some of the more aggressive lines with this small smooth cut file. We've got a nice big G clamp just to hold everything in place. And uh, it's got this old bit of strop here that I'm going to put across the edge just to protect a bit of the paintwork from the the file. So the technique we're going to be using to file the edge is called the draw file technique and we hold the file in one place and we go from heel to toe from heel to toe sharpening all away sharpening the edge right back and this creates a beautiful flat grind chisel effect. Sometimes when doing this you can get an uneven grind so what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip it over the other way and then we're gonna go um, from heel to toe, just to try and get that edge uh, pretty damn perfect. As you can see, the steel being so soft, I'm taking away loads and loads of material pretty fast, especially with this aggressive file. It's creating a nice flat edge. I'm now gonna go over it with a soft file just to get rid of some of those bigger, bigger gouges. As you can see, some of the bigger gouges have gone. And it's left it with a bit more of a small, uh, finer finish. So both sides have been filed back now. And as you can see, it's pretty rough and you can see a bit of wiring on the edge there. So you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go over it with a few stones just to even out, out a little bit and get it razor and deadly sharp. Okay, so we've got a few stones here. We've got a super aggressive stone. I'm not quite sure what grit they are, but that's probably around 80 up to 100 and slightly softer side back there. And I've got a pretty fine stone for getting rid of those scratches. And I've got this tiny little real fine polishing stone that I'm going to use right at the very end. And I've dropped this and smashed it. It used to be the same length as that, but not anymore. Let's get sharpening. So uh, as you can see here, I've gone quite far back. And um, it's flat, but it's got a slow taper down. And I never normally grind my axes like this, so it'll be a bit of an experiment to see how it performs. 
it might and probably will be a bit sticky but you know it's a cheap axe we've got about 30 of them now Do experiment with your axes you know So here's what we've got after just a bit of stoning. You can see the very edge is pretty polished and I've left it a bit rougher uh, as we come up. But you know, over time that will wear away and as you sharpen it and uh, it will end up getting a nice mirror, mirror polish. Next up, just gonna strop it. This strop. rid of the last bit of burr. I got this uh, strop off of Ben Scott and I use it all the time. Okay, so that's the edge done. What I've done, I just put a sheath over it just to keep it um, from blunting or, you know, I've dropped one of these on the floor before just after uh, sorting the edge out and it's heartbreaking. Um, so this sheath is actually from a Holtzbrook um, Halterford's classic hunting axe and it just seems to fit a lot of other axes. So a little tip for you there. Okay, so with the handle, a lot of people would just sort of leave it as is and you put and it's perfectly um you know usable and serviceable leaving it as it is but it's always good to tune it to how you'd like to tune it and how you feel comfortable using it i'm just going to bring this a little bit closer to here just just so i've got a little bit more um room just to grip it up like that uh, i'm going to thin the hole all of it down and maybe scoop out a little bit of material from around the palm swell with a rasp. And I want to leave just a little bit uh, just so when this comes loose and it will I can drop it down a little bit and still have enough room to do so. Now, I don't know if you can see here, but the cheeks either side here come sort of out of the axe head and then flare up and then go down. So I'm just going to flatten those off and make a little bit of a nicer transaction. So I'm now going to use the scraping technique where I use a knife. Uh, you can use anything with a 45 degree edge or 90 degree angle, uh, one of those ones. Um, and what you do is you, you pull the edge up and it scrapes off nice shavings and you can really keep the shape of the tool but reduce the thickness without changing the um, no, changing the shape too much and uh, I'm just using my old Castrum number 10 uh, bushcraft knife and as you can see it's rusted to fuck <laughs> snotty nose and I'm just gonna now and again just run it across the strop just to bring the edge back and then carry on scraping away <laughs> Normally when I scrape, I come 
square on and then as they get towards the palm swell I aim it in leaving a little bit more thickness in the back of the handle when you're shaping normally you don't want to touch the front at all you, you know if you want a bit more of a um, S shape you can take a little bit of material from away from the back of the axe here but you want to sort of end before you get anywhere near the swell so that's the main brunt of the work done i've thinned it out a fair bit you know you could take it back further but it's always good to do a little bit test it out and then you can always slim it back a little bit more As you can see, the palm swell is looking quite nice and flared out now. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to rough out the uh, leftover marks from the rasp. Just roughly with a bit of, um, is it 40 grit? Yeah, 40 grit. So that's all the rough marks sanded away. I'm going to go over it now with a bit of 100 grit. This is smooth it out a tad. You don't want it too smooth otherwise it just gives you blisters. Apparently. So we're just going to head off to the woods now and test the axe. Okay so we just got to the woods and we're going to try her out. So I have to say, and I'm pretty impressed with it. Before I was saying how I was a bit worried about it sticking, but um, it's not sticking at all. It's penetrating really deep and uh, releasing really easy. So I'm really impressed with it. And the handle, flip you around. No play in it at all. Impressive.
see let's see what she's like at spitting. damn good so the edge is actually held up really well sticker not so much